The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Hello, welcome to Open, the one and only talk show, bringing the best of the Bronx, New York, and the world straight to you. I'm Rina Valentin, your host and Café con Leche, and today's show is filled with visual arts. Let's have a view. First, Gail and I will be introducing the Bronx Heroes Comic Con, and then Dance Equale will be here to wow us with a snippet from their new world premiere dance routine. We talk to just nuts music band and billboard giant ron rogers from this year's fair at the square and bobby c sports roundup will cover all the latest in sports headlines and the open artist spotlight takes us back in time with everyone's favorite blue suede shoes elvis elvis let me be that's coming soon so stay tuned all that is headed your way because now we are officially open Good morning and welcome to Open. I'm Rina Valentin, your host in Café con Leche for the next hour. And you know, it's Friday. Time to get ready for the weekend. Let's see what there is to do in our Open Weekend Preview. First up, the second annual Fordham Fever Fridays. Food tasting, music, face painting, and more, all right there on Fordham Road. Fever Fridays will continue on the first Fridays of every month until November, and it starts today. That's right. It's happening today, May 3rd, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Muller Park and Pedestrian Plaza at the corner of East Fordham and Crescent Road. For more information, you can check out FordhamRoadBid.org. Next after work happy hour salsa groove mm, straight from cuba to new york city the guitars of Yuniel jimenez el guajiro de new york city will guide everyone into the weekend with the best in latin rhythms that's happening friday may 3rd at sobs in manhattan and happy hours from five to seven dance lessons follow until the show which starts at eight and also uh admission for ladies is free we love that before 7 p.m that is check uh more out by going to sobs.com and finally it's an evening with patty labelle at lehman center the queen of soul comes to the boogie down on saturday may 11th at 8 p.m performing all her greatest hits to sing the spring into form you don't want to miss for more information, you can check out LehmanCenter.org and, of course, the Lehman Center for the Performing Arts is located at 250 Bedford Park Boulevard in the Bronx at 10468. And for more info, you can call 718-960-8833. And that is what we have for you today, so make sure you check out some of those events. All right. So the Bronx Heroes Comic Con is happening on Saturday and uh, Sunday, and we've got Ray Felix in the studio, and you don't want to We also have our good friend Gail, so you don't want to go anywhere. We'll be right back. Big dreams and good grades aren't enough to get into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Finding someone who can help is the first and most important. For the next steps, go to knowhowtogo.org. Hello and welcome to Open, the one and only talk show. 
Welcome back to Open. As I mentioned, the Bronx Hero Comic Con is happening this Saturday and Sunday. And well, we've got Ray Felix, creator of the con, and our newfound friend, our good friend, Gail, to speak about it. Well, well, well. Hello, Gail. Thank you. Hi. Hey. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, you okay? I got a little bit of allergies. I know. Spring has that to us, right? Oh, yeah. I've been popping singular for the past few days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we love the spring. Spring is my favorite season, as a matter of fact. Aside from, of course, the allergies, you know. Oh, of course. Yeah, me too. I love spring. I was born in spring. You were? Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. When's your birthday? Oh, which just happened last month. Oh, nice. <laughs> You're a newborn. We love that. <laughs> I love that. And so, you know, we have Ray Felix here, right? Yes. Hi. I heard all about you. You know all about him? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the actual Bronx Heroes Comic Con that's coming on uh, mm -hmm. this weekend. And mm -hmm. uh, we've had Ray Felix on for very many years, every time it actually happens. Five, five years. years. It's actually oh the fifth year. This is your fifth year anniversary. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you're actually, you shift locations, and this year it's going to be at the Bronx Library. That's correct. Right? So you want to share a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, it's at the Bronx Library Center. And... Um, it's going to be from Saturday and Sunday. It's our first year Saturday and Sunday, uh, from 12 to 6 on Saturday and 1 to 5 on Sunday. It's a free event. It's a free admission. So uh, regardless of age, you can come in for free, and we're celebrating Free Comic Book Day. Free Comic Book yeah. Day. So you remember what we day. said, Rena? If yes. it's free, it's for me. That's it. <laughs> no, if, if it's free, it's for us. We're going to have to find another ride. Oh, you dear. know I'm down with that hood. It's free, it's for me, too. All right, so, so it's absolutely free, 100% free. That's great. Yeah. I've always been yeah. drawn to comics. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, considering you've mm. been for, in the form of art, right? Mm. Uh, I, and I that you're studying art, right? Yes, mm. I am. And from wow. what I understand, you're actually studying um, media Animation. here at BronxNet, right? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm happy to be here. We are um, happy to well be drawn. here. No, oh, thank you. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. How has You're it flirting been for you? Me. How has it been for you, Gail? It's it's been wonderful. I'm really interested in talking to Ray about the superhero business. Uh oh. I, I've always wanted to be a superhero, but uh, mm. what does it take to be a Bronx superhero? Hmm, hmm. that's a good one. Well, in Bronx Heroes 2.0, um, our heroes are a roach. Um, an environmentalist. Oh, uh, Roach. <laughs> <laughs> Roach, an environmentalist. And, and, and a boxer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I think anyone could be a Bronx hero. Anyone that wants to um, do good for others, uh, mm -hmm. not think much of themselves, um, okay. and uh, have an open heart. I think those are the key components for and do community service. Those are the that's very key important. Components. Which, Get back. Uh, which yeah. you know, that those that that's great advice, wouldn't you say, Gail? Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful idea to give back yeah. to the community. Which yes. you know, speaking of, you yeah. actually do give back to the community yes. with Bronx Heroes. You yes. want to share a little bit about the outreach that you do with yeah. the youth and and the art and all this great stuff you're doing, Ray. We're so proud of you here. Oh, thank you. Um, um, well, first of all, we do like different things like with uh, kids like at Wings Academy and uh, Kennedy Campus. Kennedy Campus, I was uh, starting to do um, uh, a, a teen con, which we're developing. So hopefully next year, like their teachers are going to create their own Comic Con in the school so kids can self-publish their books. So I'm kind of like consulting them on how to do that. And at Wings Academy, we have the kids um, also creating comic books, but they're also doing like fine art paintings and stuff. And they have a show up at Poe Park right now called Pretty Pink Pollock. Nice, yeah. nice. So it's it's yeah. all it's really cool that mm. you, the art is actually in the schools in a comic form. Yeah, in a comic form, yes. And so, yeah. Gail, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just because you inquired about you know the mm. superhero status, mm -hmm. and and you know I hope you don't mind me bringing this oh, up, but ahead. you know um, Go ahead. apparently you're being sued for using the term superhero. Yes, I am. <laughs> That's yeah. ridiculous. He laughs, and he laughs. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's a ridiculous, oh, but, you know, so, but it's like oh my goodness, laugh. and by Marvel, like, by Marvel really, they say. need money, <laughs> really, <laughs> really. <laughs> so you want to share a little bit about that? They're super well, villains for stepping. Yeah, on they're a super little villains. Guy. They're super villains <laughs> for sure. Uh, well, the first thing is that um, I've been using the word superhero. World without superheroes came out when I was in college in '93, uh, 
It first printed as a fanzine among my friends in 2000. And then in 2004, we decided to go color. So I started developing it in color and reprinting the issues. And um, 2010, I trademarked it you know, for the registration mark. And then I get a call from Marvel and DC saying, you can't do that. We own that word <laughs> in any language, in any, any variation, in any form, any misspelled or correctly spelled word. And I was like, that's impossible. Uh, I did my own research, looked up trademark law. Um, my registration was granted legal by the federal government, so I own the registration. Right. Uh, but now they're taking me to court, and we've been in court for about two years, since 2010. And uh, we've been um, basically writing emails to, <laughs> to the court uh, in responses and back and forth, uh, debating Whoa. this topic of who owns the word superhero. Interesting. Yeah. So myself, Marvel, and DC, we have rights to the word superhero. <laughs> but mine is A World Without Superheroes. That's my title. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Way to get so. around it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so. Uh, you know, Gail, just because of all this controversy behind it, maybe we should come up with another name for your development. I agree. Oh, uh, okay. Well, let's brainstorm. Yeah, what I mean, you know, it? okay, so we've got the Bronx Strong Campaign, right, mm -hmm. which you're a part of, right? Mm -hmm. And we've got Media Literacy, right, which mm -hmm. we're working on uh, through the actual outreach and the mm -hmm. youth and, and the animations. Gail. Uh -huh. right. And then, of course, you know, we've got Bronx Net and Lehman College doing this uh, collaboration yeah. with Your Birth, which was last month. Mm -hmm. So uh, w w what would you consider that? That's a lot to think about in once. <laughs> All right, so then you know what? Maybe we should come back to that next week. Yeah, well, no, Google I think it. we could come up with something. Ray's very talented. Maybe Ray can come up with something. Yeah, what do you think? Help us out, Ray. I think you could do Bronx. Uh, ah, Shiza. Um, sorry. Gail, Good word. Gail yeah, you could it's do. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Gail, you could do like a super Bronx strong. Super. Ooh. Bronx, and then ooh. heroes at the end. I like Super that. Super Bronx Strong Hero <laughs> there you Gale. Go. There no, you no, go. Hero. We can't no. use Hero. Hero in. Well, Heroine. we threw it off. We threw Bronx Strong like in the middle of it. No? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that's great. I mean, um, Super Bronx Strong. Gale. That, that would be my, my, my book. Uh, you know that what? would be my name. Just, just, just because we'll, it will be Super Bronx Strong Gale Female Hero. Female Hero. There you go. Okay. I'll, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Can I can I ask one question though? Yeah, sure. Whenever we have a, a female super something, <laughs> um, we are always drawn with heels. Why? I don't understand. Can you imagine running after a villain in stilettos, Rena? You know, I, I hear you. I hear you, and I don't know if that's even true, if that's even possible. That's However, true. it does make our legs look fierce. So you know, I'm, I'm I'm okay with that. You know. Yeah, I think we need to rethink that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can revisit that too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We can definitely revisit that. Now, once again, the Comic Con is happening this Saturday and Sunday, yes. and if you could just share the details of of yeah. the day really quickly before we wrap okay. up, so that people know it's free. It's we love free, that. and we're gonna have uh, 24 artists uh, visiting. Um, and you could talk to them about, um, bring your portfolios, talk to them about the profession. We'll have uh, industry um, professionals talking about publishing, self-publishing, uh, getting your comics done. And we'll also have a, a group of art and design high school kids working, uh, talking about how they created animation, toys, uh, all through um, Mike Klein, a good friend of mine who uh, used to draw for Doug. Oh my goodness, this wow. sounds so exciting. Yeah, Thank so you so much for being awesome. here with us, Ray and Gail. And you know, good. something was just presented to me. You mm. have to pick up this week's Riverdale Press, girlfriend. You mm. are on the cover. Oh my God, I'm you a star. You are on the cover. Look at you. Oh. I'm a star. I'm a star. I'm a oh big, my bright, goodness. shiny star. Very Look cool. at you, Miss Gail. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. Rena. It's all your fault. Yeah, no, I love, I love <laughs> springing people off. Spring. Oh. Yay, blossom I flower, go ahead, go <laughs> blossom, blossom into the world. Thank you, Rena. Just make sure Thank you, you, you don't forget where you came from, You're okay? Thank you. I will. I will right. be back. Just making sure. All right. Thanks, Gail. We'll see you next week, doll. Next week. All right, babe. All right. Once again, for uh, the Bronx Heroes Comic Con, mm -hmm. you can check out bxhcc.com mm. for more. We have to take a quick break, but make sure once again you check out the Bronx Comic Con this weekend. Hey, how's it going? Sir, are you okay? What? Oh, this? It's probably nothing. I'm sure it'll go away. Go away? But, sir, that can't be good. No, it's cool. 
Really? Do you want a napkin or something? Everything's fine. Thanks. You wouldn't ignore this. So why ignore the signs of a stroke? At the first warning signs, call 911 immediately. Because time lost is brain lost. My name's Brandon. Nine years old, being alcoholic. Hi, Brandon. I'll start drinking with the older kids. And whatever they do, I'll do. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. I know I'll start with alcohol. I'm just not sure how it's going to end. Hey, welcome back to Open. It is exciting here on the set, and I know you're listening to our groovy music. And, well, DJ Vince Bracey is here with us. And we just want to give him a quick shout-out because, you know, he's been here, but we haven't seen him, right? We haven't spoken in a, in, in a minute. So what's going on, Vince Bracey? Happy Friday, Rena. Happy Friday, <laughs> darling. Long time no see. Uh, well, not really. You and I have seen each other. Well, yeah. Everyone else hasn't seen you, and so we just wanted to... Make sure that they acknowledge that you're still here. You're of still course. jamming in the background and All the moving time. and doing your thing. What are you up to lately? Uh, nothing big. Just enjoying the show. Get to see Gail. I'm glad she made it onto the cover of the newspaper. So maybe I'll be next. Who knows? That, maybe, <laughs> maybe that. Hey, that's what it's all about. You know, spring forward. Spring we love forward. springing forward. All right, doll. What, what are you going to be jamming for us today? Well, you know, just the usual. A lot of instrumentals. Just make sure everybody's having a great Friday. Uh, we got a really packed show today. I'm really excited. Yeah, so it's nice to you get to see actually, Elvis. Yeah. That's what I'm really Oh, <laughs> you already know. Blue Swayze. Oh, yeah, something like that. I don't think he ever dies. He'll never yeah, die. Never, He'll never, never die. All right, Vince Bracey in the house, jamming for us today. All right, you guys, we do have to take a quick break, but there is more open when we return. Do not go anywhere. habit to form. Drink at least two glasses of water every day instead of a sugary drink. My refrigerator is primarily stocked with water. Two outs with a runner on first base. Now the big guy comes up with that, hitting 342 with 92 RBIs and 36 home. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Um, Mom, I'm not going to go to college. What are you saying? You've got to go to college. Well, they offered me a job and... Son, college is much more important. No. Yes. No, Mom. Yes. Anyways, it's my decision. Okay, well then decide what degree you're going to get because you will go to college. Their tomorrow depends on your words today. The Hispanic Scholarship Fund has the information you need to help your kids go to college. 
So here are the keys. Congratulations, it's officially yours. I'm sure you'll have many happy years here. Except for you, because you'll be gone three years from now, struck down by the same disease that got your father. So you won't be around for them. And sadly, it could have been detected early with a simple test, but you didn't have it. Okay, who wants to check out the backyard? For a list of tests every man should have, go to ahrq.gov. There is also a very attractive extended warranty option that includes free service and parts for the next five years. But there's no need for you to get that. You failed to get the test you needed at the doctor that would have detected disease early enough where it could have been treated. So you won't be around in two years to see him grow up, which means the warranty would be useless. Okay, sign here, please. For a list of tests every man should have, go to ahrq.gov. Hello, welcome back to Open. Dance I Quail is a dance troupe that aims to wow its audiences this week with their world premiere of not one, but two new works. And we're going to welcome to our open stage uh, for a quick interview, I Quail Shaheed, Hi. who is actually the founder and is also celebrating his fifth anniversary. Yes, Five yes. is the magic number today. It is, I see. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, hailing all the way from Philadelphia. Yes, ma'am. And actually doing works over there and over here. Right. For the past five years, we've been both in New York and Philly, doing most of our educational uh, outreach in Philly and doing most of our artistic work here for five years. So it's been fun. Now, um, what's the difference uh, between doing your work in Philadelphia and New York? A lot of traveling. A lot. Well, aside from that, I mean, like the audience, I no, mean, of course, no. uh, traveling, yeah, that's quite the it's long, commute, right? yeah, I don't think a Metro card I got you. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, I guess the biggest difference is, is the audience. Um, Philly is home for me, so I can do a lot of uh, work in the community. I have a lot of connections to the people in the inner city um, that look up to me, that know that I've, I've made it out of, of the projects in Philly. So I have the responsibility to go back and bring my company there and allow them to be role models to the kids there and then come here and bring all of that source material and work to what we do on the stage. That's beautiful. That's, you know, it's a beautiful thing. What, what I mentioned earlier is like, don't forget where you come from, right? Exactly. And so the fact that you're actually going back and forth as opposed to leaving and then right. just staying in New York, which is what most <laughs> artists do. Exactly, because New York is, is the mecca of, of all things art. So if you can make it in New York, then you can make it anywhere. But my, my model is a little bit different. If I can make it in New York, then I can make it back to share what I've, I've learned and picked up so that other people can follow in my footsteps or figure out another path that, that works for them. So. Now, you have a troupe. You, have, you actually have a roster of dancers that yes. are part of Dance Iquil Troupe. Now, how, mm -hmm. how many of the, of dancers do you have? On? So we have nine dancers in mm -hmm. total, um, four women and four men that come from various different parts of, of the country. Some have come from as far as Japan, um, Puerto Rico, um, some from you gotta say with yes. the accent, <laughs> you gotta say with the accent, Puerto Rico, Puerto baby. Rico. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. And then two of my dancers that will perform today for you, um, one is from Virginia, but I met her in her freshman year at, at the University of the Arts in Philly, and then the other one is a, is a local um, New York boy from, the, from Mount Vernon. Um, so it's an eclectic group. Black, white, Puerto Rican, Japanese, nice. so. Nice, nice, mm -hmm. Mul multicultural. multicultural, we love that, exactly. we love that. So what is uh, your style of dance, like is, do you have a signature? Yes. That people, you know how Alvin Ailey has a signature and, and there are other dancers that mm -hmm. have a signature like marks or like movement, what's yours? I think our signature is, is actually less the movement but more the message, hmm. we're, we're really, um, very interested in social justice and and dealing with the causes that everybody can relate to whether they've experienced it or not you know the um, we deal with work that deal with sexuality spirituality um, the needs of the family unit um, con community connectedness so whenever you're coming to the show you get this overall sense of um, dance I productions go from um, 
downtrodden or adversity and triumphing over the adversity. So more so than the movement, because no new movement under the sun, right? Everything has already been done. Right, but right, But how right. can we use the movement to, to tell the story that you can overcome any obstacle? I think that's the signature of the company. That's what you see when you come to the show. That's what, what grabs you in the heart. So, no, that's awesome. Yeah. And what are we going to be looking at today? You know why? Because here's the thing, right? When people watch dance or, you know, they actually go to a dance presentation, uh, I don't know if everyone gets that. In that dance, there's a story. Mm -hmm. However, because it's dance, it, it's almost relayed in an abstract form based on uh, each individual's perception mm -hmm. of what they're going through in life. Right. And what you're saying is that in your story, there's adversity. It, 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 it's in there. It's it, in mm -hmm. that storyline. Mm -hmm. So in, in this particular dance, what you're going to see is an excerpt from... Um, Inward Flux, which was choreographed, choreographed by Christopher Ralph. Mm -hmm. um, that premieres next weekend, May 10th, 11th, and 12th at the Combo Theater. Nice, congrats. Um, thank you. So in this particular duet, it's really a love duet mm -hmm. um, that happens in an abstract world. It happens in the mind of, of the young woman that, that plays the character. So you'll see the connection between the two of them. You'll see the, the intimacy. You'll see the close connection, them staring at each other's eyes, the way that they walk, the way that they look to each other and reach to each other. So, yeah, so that's what you'll get from it. Awesome. That's what I hope you get from All it. All right, great. And uh, once again, we're actually going to get a taste of that. So okay. don't go anywhere because we're going to be right back with Dance Iquil on Open. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Have a nice day. You too. Thanks. If only child abuse were this easy to recognize. If you even suspect abuse, call 1-800-4-A-CHILD. All calls are anonymous and confidential. Trust your instincts. Welcome back to Open. Please welcome to the open stage with a duet from Inward Flux, Allison Sale and Randall Riley.
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And once again, for more on Dance I Quail, you can go to CumbleTheater.com, right? Is it Cum dot, It's CumbleTheater.com and, and Dance, and dance I Quail I Quail dot org. Org. Right, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we got them right. Yes. All right, and then once again, that's happening on... May 10th, 11th, and 12th. Um, which is next weekend, Mother's Day weekend. So yes, 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 it's a great Mother's Day yes. uh, gift, actually. Exactly. Oh, thank you so much. That was so beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. All right. <laughs> so, um, do you want to say a few words really quick before we go? Uh, I, I didn't know if you needed to catch your breath. Yeah. <laughs> well, they probably need to catch their breath, but they're wonderful dancers. Randall's again from Mount Vernon, and Allison is from uh, Alexandria, Virginia. So. They've been with me for a few years now, and I'm happy to have them. As you can see, they're both beautiful, so everybody should come see them. Absolutely, right? absolutely, yeah. along with the rest of the dancers. Once again, thank you for sharing this beautiful art form on thank our you. open stages. And once again, you can go to check, uh, you can check out CumbleTheater.com for more on the premiere and uh, danceiquail.org for more on the troupe. We'll be back with Just Nuts Music and Ron Rogers, but first, let's take a look at a screening that the Bronx Documentary Center held in honor of Tim he Hetherington, a filmmaker who passed away just last year. Let's take a look. Over 100 came out to support the Bronx Documentary Center's gala fundraiser located in the hub on Cortland Avenue and 151st Street. It would allow me to express myself. The evening featured the screening of the newly released film, How Far Is the Frontline From Here, chronicling the life of one of its founders, Oscar nominee for Best Director of a Documentary in 2011, Tim Hetherington. The pain is still there from Tim's death, and uh, I think the good thing about the film is you just see how full of life he was, you know, you see him laughing and telling stories, you see the way he connected to people. I think you get a lot of his humanity in the film, and, and that brings back it's wonderful to feel like that's getting out there to people and people are going to see that and hear that. Um, but it also it reinforces the pain, you know, what, what, a, what a huge loss it was. The same year it opened, Hetherington's critically acclaimed film Restrepo, which looks at the lives of a group of American troops while embedded in a remote section of Afghanistan, was recognized by the Academy. Months after, Hetherington would die in Libya while covering the civil conflict on the front lines there. Fans of his work came to celebrate his contribution and the mission of BDC to pave the way for others. This space was something that, that we talked about a lot, uh, a space in, in a neighborhood like this. Uh, Tim was doing workshops around the world in underserved communities. Um, he was enthusiastic about what we could do here. He was, you know, uh, he was obsessed with education uh, and, you know, the media and information. and. I, I'm, I feel good that we've been able to pour our energy into this and get his, get his story out. Following the screening, a panel of close friends and associates talked about the man behind the work. To start, you know, um, regardless of if we discuss his work, his, his, his personal life, I think it's clear that, you know, all of us knew different, we knew Tim, and we just all know him in different contexts. And let's be clear that Tim was very particular about context. While the center will continue to keep Hetherington's life central, they also want it to be a space for the community to enjoy. Since Mike and I founded the space, it's been nothing but a labor of, of love. And so for every exhibition that we've had and working with the photographers that we've been able to, having the many school groups come in and veterans come in and, 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 and different people come in and, and respond to what we do, um, has been incredibly rewarding. Which Way is the Frontline from here premiered on HBO and the 90-minute film will be rebroadcasted on the same network over the next few months. For BronxNet, this is Arlene Matoko. Welcome back. Our next guests are performing at the Fair at the Square on May 11th. Please welcome to the set Ron Rogers, Vic Sabatini, Mike Bello, and Al Bilfuri of Just Nuts Music. Woo! Welcome back, gentlemen. Thank you for having to us. Be here. Of course. Now, you know, of course, we would have preferred you to be here with your instruments. However, the idea is that people get over there and kind of get down with Just Nuts. So just share with everyone a little bit about Just Nuts. Well, it's actually this year we're doing something different. We have Ron Rogers, he's Billboard's top ten songwriter, and we're going to be doing his hit records mm -hmm. that he did. 
in the 70s and 80s and some new stuff on his new CD. Huh. <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah, no, just because, you know, it's, it's, there's age, you know, like variation going on here as far as the music style and, you know, our viewers. So can just give me a little idea of like what genre of music that is? Uh, dance music is uh, where I'm most popular. I've been very lucky. I've had several top ten billboard records. Uh, a lot of the performers I've produced over the years are from the Bronx. Corey Day from the Savannah Band and Kid Creole from the... Kid Creole and the Coconuts, oh. and I've written uh, quite a few, quite a bit of their music, and produced quite a bit of it. And uh, this uh, performance is about uh, bringing, uh, bringing to the stage some of those uh, songs. Deputy of Love, which was a big dance record in the 80s, it was oh, number I one. I know that song. All right, I'm shouting Thank myself. Age-wise, no, I'm like not. over here talking about <laughs> age variation. I'm your deputy Beauty of, of love. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep it going. That's keep perfect. Going. Don't That's stop. perfect. Perfect. Get on stage and sing with well, us. Well, it's really nice to meet you, saying yeah, word. This is so pleasure. awesome. So you can have a nice eclectic sound going on this big year. Band. Yeah. With a big band, ten piece orchestra. Nice. Yes. Nice. But it's gonna be a great fair. You know they've done this a few years. Yes. And every have. year it gets better and better. Yes. And this year's guess just gonna be great. I know, this is a great lineup. Yeah. And you're gonna food. be there. Yeah, and yes. I'm hosting it. Awesome. <laughs> Donna awesome. Williams is gonna be there. Who? Donna Williams. Yeah, I know. I have to look at my, 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 my yeah, list. Your so just is, please uh, share. Yes. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yes. The WVOX <laughs> Radio. Yeah. Well, he's actually the main host, and I'm the uh, co host. The co host. Right? Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, because right. I'm here in Bronx, Bronx Nat, you right. know, radio, television. Right. That works. Man, woman. That's even Age better. variations. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there's going to be some. Did you mention that already? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make up. I'm trying to. <laughs> You do well. There's going to be <laughs> there's going to be plenty of food and something for everyone. In fact, bring the kids because there's going to be a museum, mobile museum. The Bronx Mobile Museum is going to be there. Yeah, yeah the so children's museum. The yeah, children's that's it, right, museum. Yeah. yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. That's a new addition this year. Actually. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's going to be some face painting. We love face painting. And it's just going to be fabulous. I think it's going to be the best ever. And so many people put a lot of work into the uh, fair. Well, it's a big fair, actually. It's yeah. a very big fair. It's gotten bigger this year. Bigger than most years, really. This is the biggest yet. Right. What What makes it is it this new because addition? Because they have two stages, if I'm not right. They're right. going to be two mm -hmm. stages in two there different is. locations. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a lot of entertainment, a lot of food, like Ronnie said, and you're going to have Ron Rogers there. I know. Yeah, and I'm really excited about performing. We've been working hard. We got a great group. We got a big horn section. I got people from all over the country coming in to play horns for me. And uh, we got some great singers. I'm going to be performing A Night in New York, which was a top 10 billboard hit for the Elbow Bones and Racketeers band I produced. That was on EMI Records. And Deputy of Love, which was number one in the world back in, uh, whoa, now I'm dating myself. <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't go back so far, right? Say the date. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm cringy, yeah. yeah. And a yeah, bunch yeah. of cuts from my new Cross, Cross My Heart album, which is on M21 Records, which is really a cool, uh, cool collection of tracks, too. Wow, yeah. this is so cool. Yeah, but we've been so busy the past few years re recording. I must have uh, done about uh, 12 or 13 uh, singles in the past two years. And uh, some new stuff with Kid Creole and the Coconuts, too, coming out. I just finished a new Kid Creole and the Coconuts record, too. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know August Darnell, you know? right? You know, we're all from the neighborhood. Well, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, I used to listen to him when I was a kid. Uh, <laughs> was that kid? When you were very young. <laughs> when yeah. I was very, very young, like those second graders in the audience over there. Yeah. Um, no, no, I'm kidding. You know, but, you know, what's beautiful is that, you know, there's this root and this actual like, <clears throat> representation of the eclecticness that is yeah. the Bronx. And, you know, Creole, I know him from the hip hop yeah. aspect. That's so. right, yeah. You know, just the oh, fact oh, that you're telling yeah. me you, you've got you've got like a whole nice array of genres going on. Yeah, and you know, uh, most of us are from the Bronx. And Corey Day from the Savannah Band, she grew up in the Bronx. So it's good to be back home doing the tracks, you know. So how do you guys feel about this? This is quite uh, actually, exciting. This, I met up with Ron. We, Ronnie was actually my first drummer when I was a teenager back in Castle Hill Avenue. <laughs> and uh, we reunited about a year ago. I started doing some guitar tracks for him. And it evolved into more things, a show. And we kind of morphed the Just Nuts band into the uh, Ron Rogers act. You know and what's really what's cool happening. is that you can do that. You know, because there, there are people who get big and then they just go and they just forget, right? Yeah. And then to actually go, come back, and then bring it back and share and more. And we're having a great time. You, you know what it's about? It's about community. Right. And it's about camaraderie. Yes. And 
we all share that because we all have a common basis of where we came from. Nice. It's going to be a great party. Apparently. It's going to go on all day, too. It is. I'm, I'm going to be there. <laughs> We're I'm going to be there. Too. We're loving it. We're all going to be there. Now, what time are you guys going on? Um, well, Janet uh, Florendo, two? she's she put the whole thing together. And we're going on about two. Some two between two and three o'clock. Right, but the festival itself starts at 11, and it goes until like 6. 6 o'clock, yes. Right, so it's an all-day affair. An eight-hour day. Yeah, it's an eight-hour day, and, and there's going to be food and, and all clowns, kinds of and things. Clowns, clowns, and things And non-stop entertainment. And non-stop entertainment. The Funk Factory is going to be there. Right. Mm -hmm. Freestyle Sensation Suave yes. is going to be mm -hmm. there. And he's hot, you know that. Free From Alive and Kicking is yeah. going to be there. Nice. You know, it's just going to be spectacular. Yes. You know? And it's going to be lots of fun. Yes. Loads of fun. And most importantly, which is my favorite word, it's free! It's free. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> it's free I love that word. That works. <laughs> so there's going to be street vendors and dancers and... And you're hosting. Right. Yeah, I'm co-hosting. Co oh, well, I'm co there we, that's it right there. I'm bringing in the... The sazon, groove, baby. the groove. I'm bringing in the, you know, the sazon flavor. The class. <laughs> Well, I'll take that, too. Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Mucho caliente. Mucho caliente. Okay. And thank you for that, gentlemen. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and so uh, I will be seeing you May 11th. And mm -hmm. are there any last words you want to share with everyone before we go? Come on down to the fair at the square. Come it's going to be wonderful, man. It's awesome. Gonna be lots of fun. Awesome. Thank you so much for oh, coming through today. You're welcome. It's an honor to meet you. And yeah. thank you and guys you for coming and again. visiting again. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you. My thank pleasure. you. Thank you. Thank you for... Always, uh, you know, coming through and sharing whatever it is that's going on. Our pleasure. Anytime. All right, awesome. All right, All right, once again, for more on Just Nuts and, of course, the festival, you can go to justnutsmusic.net or you can check them out at Live at the Fair at the Square. That's happening May 11th, and we'll be right back with more Open after this. This is Bobby C. and our morning sports takes us out to the big ballpark in the Bronx where the Yankees are in the midst of a 10-game homestand, wrapping up the week with the Houston Astros, first-timers in the American League. It's frustrating. I mean, it's, it's, it, you know... I think y'all know how I feel about this game. You've been around me enough. We've been playing well. And to come out here and to really to give up those five runs that early in the game and, and feel like we don't have really a chance to get back in it and, and not give us a chance to win, uh, it, it makes me sick to my stomach. You know, anytime there's injuries, it's unfortunate. I mean, um, it does open doors for some of the other guys, some young guys like myself. Um, like I said, it's unfortunate that it's happening, but, you know, some guys are going to get a chance and, you know, get a chance to show them what they can do. Tonight, I'm just happy to to help my team to, to get a W, to get a win, and hopefully we can get uh, keep it going tomorrow and, 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 the rest of the, and the rest of the season. When you haven't faced a guy before, you're kind of just out there just looking for a good pitch to hit, and he uh, hung me a change up the 1-0 pitch, and I... I put a good swing on it, but I, I missed it. And I was like, man, I, so I, I've been chasing the off speed or the change ups all night, so I finally stayed back on one and, and put a good swing on it and stayed through it. Started feeling better, started getting a good pitch, good swing to the ball, and I think I'm feeling so much better, you know. Today concluded the first month of the season. Did it meet or exceed your expectations? I thought our guys did a very good job. Uh, Especially with the start that we had, the one and four start we had, and then we were going up against Verlander. I thought our guys did a very, very good job. After splitting the first two games of the series Monday and Tuesday nights, the Yankees took two of three from Houston in a 5-4 win Wednesday night. Lyle Overbay wisely took his time in the base path, long enough for the Bombers to grab the lead in the sixth. From there, the bullpen was lights out and pitched the rest of the way, holding on for a 5-4 victory. The Yanks had the off day Thursday, but returned to action tonight at the stadium for the final three games of the long homestand. The Pinstripers welcome Feisty Oakland to the big ballpark in the Bronx. ACC Sabathia will tow the rubber tonight. He opposes Oakland starter A.J. Griffin. In other Yankee news, the recovery from hip surgery continues for Alex Rodriguez, who was cleared to resume baseball activities Wednesday. A-Rod will report to Tampa and begin to work his way back. He is still not expected to return until the All-Star break. 
The Pinstripers lost reliever Joppa Chamberlain to the DL in an oblique strain this week. You can add him to a long list of the Yankees' sideline, including Curtis Granderson and Kevin Euclid. However, Granderson and Euclid are nearing a return, while catcher Francisco Cervelli was moved to the 60-day DL. Don't expect him back anytime soon. The Yankees added infield depth in the presence of Chris Nelson via trade with Colorado. Cast consideration, excuse me, and a player to be named later completed that deal for New York. <clears throat> As for the New York Mets, they dropped two of three in Miami to open their road trip earlier this week. However, they salvaged the series, winning Wednesday night 7-6 thanks to a Jordani Valdespin pinch hit homer. His three-run shot highlighted a four-run six for the Mets, who will now be in Atlanta this weekend. The calendar turned to May this week, and Mets young ace Matt Harvey was named the National League Pitcher of the Month for April. A spectacular April it was from Matt Harvey. The Mets are 11-15, five back in first place Atlanta in the NL East. The Yankees are 17-10, second Second place, two and a half back of Boston and the AL East. We shift gears from the baseball diamond to the NBA hardwood where the playoffs are in full swing and the first round is really heating up. Just when it looked like they were buried, the Brooklyn Nets are on the verge of taking the first round series with Chicago, forcing a Game 7 Thursday night on the road thanks to a terrific Game 6 win. Darren Williams, Brooke Lopez and Joe Johnson each scored 17 points and the Nets again avoided elimination. Final score 95-92, all tied up at three games apiece. Game 7 is set for Saturday night in the BK. The winner of the first round battle gets to play defending champ Miami in round two. Consolation prize there. Suddenly, the first round matchup between the Knicks and the Boston Celtics is a series. The Seas, who trailed 3-0, came back and won game four in Boston and then shocked the NBA universe with an impressive game five win in New York. That series back in Boston tonight. If the Celtics win a game seven would be played in New York on Sunday, we could have two game sevens between the Knicks and the Nets this weekend. Chicago's Joe Kim Noah, a New York City product and former NYC street baller, has vowed that the Bulls will win Game 7. Interestingly enough, Chicago has Bronx Hoops legend Ed Pinckney on the sidelines as an assistant coach. Plenty of New York flavor on the Chicago bench, but Nets fans are hoping that Brooklyn's golden touch can make a winner out of a franchise that has longed for a return to postseason success after a tough few seasons recently in New Jersey. Meanwhile, the Knicks have been extremely cocky in their first round series, dressing in all black prior to Game 5 as a way of saying that they were attending Boston's funeral. By doing so, they have ignited the Celtics. Tempers flared at the end of Game 5, although no punches were thrown. Head coach Mike Woodson said he was upset with his team for wearing all black and mimicking the funeral. On the ice, the New York Rangers opened their first round series with Washington Thursday night, but the Caps found a way to take a quick one. Nothing series advantage, winning the opener 3-1 in D.C. Game 2 is set for Saturday afternoon in our nation's capital. The Broadway Blue Shirts will try to even the series. Puck drops at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. The Rangers will return to New York for games 3 and 4 on Monday and Wednesday nights. The Islanders didn't fare much better in their opener against Pittsburgh, falling 5-0 to the top-seeded Penguins. They will try again tonight in Pittsburgh. That game starts at 7. In the NFL, the Jets continue to make off-season headlines. Tim Tebow was released earlier in the week. But there are still five quarterbacks set for camp. Mark Sanchez addressed the media Thursday in Forum Park and said that he welcomes the competition. Gang Green will be banking on their draft. The John Itzik era has officially begun. We caught up with the two first rounders from the Jets on draft night. Oh, man, it's going to be great. You know, Rex Ryan, great coach. You know, love his DBs. You know, teaches up, you know, coaches and teaches up to a T. And uh, just, you'll be a great fan base down here in New York. Uh, the fans, the fans love you. Uh, as I, as you can see, when they call my name, they give a big roar. But uh, it's just gonna feel great. You know, I've never been to New York except for for now. But now I, uh, it's gonna be for a, a little while, a long time. So uh, I feel great about that. What to expect? It was a toss up, really. I'm pretty sure you heard the same thing from everybody else in the draft. We didn't have a clue where we were getting drafted to. Uh, we didn't. We really don't listen to the media, really. So, <laughs> so I'm, you put me in pads right now. So. And that's pretty much it. I'm just trying to get uh, understand where I'm playing and understand where they want me at and mold myself into uh, the, the defensive lineman they want me to be. The rebuilding process for the Jets has officially begun. Time for some quick hitters. If you get a chance, you should come out to Van Cortland Park on Sunday morning for an all-day cricket tournament as the locals gear up for an international sport with plenty of Bronx flavor. Our Bronx Tech cameras will be rolling. We hope to see you there. From Yankee camp, young pitcher Michael Pineda is slowly and surely working his way back. He topped 95 miles per hour in an extended spring training game this week. The Yanks still, have gotten, still haven't gotten much return on the trade with Seattle, but are hoping Pineda could be a difference maker this summer. 
We are about one day and seven hours away from the Kentucky Derby. For more on the War of the Roses, visit KentuckyDerby.com. And from the racing world, NASCAR returns to Talladega this weekend. Alabama could be golden for Danica Patrick, who is running well of late in the NASCAR series. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for an historic announcement that really shouldn't be. NBA center Jason Collins came out this week and told the sports world that he's gay. He becomes the first active pro male athlete to openly address the issue. The 34-year-old is currently a free agent, but has spent 12 seasons in the league, nine of which in the playoffs, and has played for a handful of teams, including the Nets and the Boston Celtics and Washington Wizards, this season. Clearly, his announcement is bold and courageous. It will be interesting to see how he is accepted in NBA circles, especially behind closed doors and team locker rooms moving forward. I give Jason Collins all the credit in the world. I think his announcement will help others. But I do think it's important to point out that Jason Collins is clearly not the first gay athlete in male professional sports. I'm sure he's one of many, in fact. And at the end of the day, I think sports fans shouldn't be concerned with someone's sexual preference, but rather how well a player plays their sport. That day that we can solely focus on the games themselves will, will be the day that we've turned the corner on issues like this. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Stay with us. More open coming up. My name is Andrea Lee Greenberg, and I'm a proud co-captain of Team Green Bean. I walk for Autism Speaks because my son Tyler is the single most important person in my life. Walk Now for Autism Speaks raises awareness because every time a city puts on a walk, it is a terrific way to come together as a community, to reach out to one another with resources, to share stories. We've got to continue scientific research and lobby the government and continue to raise as much money as possible for a disorder that is shockingly being diagnosed every day in so many homes across America. The single most important thing we can do is to get the message out that these children and these adults are incredible human beings and deserve a place in our communities. Walk now for Autism Speaks. To find a walk near you, visit walknowforautismspeaks.org. Hello, welcome back to Open. It's time for our Open Artist Spotlight. The Open Artist Spotlight is made possible in part with public funds from the Bronx Council on the Arts through the New York State Council on the Arts Decentralization Program. Today's Open Artist will be performing music from some of the greatest Bronx icons. Please, take it away for Bronx Bombers! Yeah. Right? That's what it is? Oh, okay. Splish splash, I was taking a bath Long about a Saturday night Come on, everybody. Rubbed up, just relaxing in the tub Thinking everything was all right Well, I stepped out the tub, put my feet on the floor I wrapped the towel around me, then I opened the door. Well, well, I'm splish splash, I jumped back in the bath. Well, how was I to know there was a party going on? There was a splishing and a splash, and reeling with the feeling, moving and a grooving, rocking and a rolling. Hey, yeah! That's it. A bing bang, I saw the whole gang dancing on my living room rug. A flip flop, they was doing the bop. All the teens had the dancing bug. There was lollipop with Peggy Sue. Good golly, Miss Rena wasn't even there to a well. A splish splash, I forgot about the bath. I went and put my dancing shoes on. From Bobby Darren, we take you to Fordham Road. A little bit of Dion in the Belmonts. Each time we have a quarrel, it almost breaks my heart. Cause I am so afraid that we will have to part. Each night I ask the stars of above. If you know the words, everybody sing along. One girl. There we go. One day I feel so happy. Next day I feel so sad. I guess I'll learn to take the good with the bad. 
Each night I ask the stars up above. All right, all the boys. We'll take anybody at this point. I cried a tear for nobody but you. And I'll be a lonely one if you should say we're through. Well, if you want to make me cry, that won't be so hard to do. And if you should say goodbye, I'll still go on loving you. Each night I ask the stars up above, why must I be a teenager in love? I cried a tear for nobody but you. And I'll be a lonely one if you should say we're through. Well, if you want to make me cry, that won't be so hard to do. And if you should say goodbye, I'll still go on loving you. Each night I ask the stars up above, why must I be a teenager in love? 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 Bobby Darren and Dion, timeless music. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness, it is timeless music. And you know, we know you as Elvis, yes. but you, you do variations now. Yes, yeah. Gene DiNapoli, everyone, yeah. right? It's been uh, it's been coming a long time. You know, we're doing Elvis for 33 years, right. doing the Blues Bugs for 15. And everywhere we travel around the country, they want to know about the Bronx. So my wife and I said, why don't we do a tribute to Bronx music? Nice, you nice, know? nice. And of course, you're going to be at Fair at the Square. Yeah, we'll be That's at the Fair That's happening next Saturday. Next Saturday, you're going to be there. Yes, I'm going to be there. Yeah, we go on about 12 o'clock. Nice. And we actually have six shows that day. Nice. Yeah, we, we, they actually want the Bronx Bomber show in Staten Island. Wow. So we're going to be all over the place that That's day. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. We're having a ball with it. Yeah. Well, you know what? It, you're right. It's timeless concert. Oh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. We do songs by Bobby Darren, Dion, Tony Orlando, Phil Spector came from the Bronx, Jerry Vale, just a whole bunch of Bronx artists. And it's all about fun. Yeah. That's all it's about is fun. Yeah. Everybody walks out of there saying, wow, we got to go to Arthur Avenue or the Bronx Zoo. And it's just wonderful. Awesome. Thanks That's for great. sharing it with Pleasure. us here on our Pleasure. open stages. And once again, for more on the Bronx Bombers, you can visit jeansinappley.com. And that is all the time we have for today's show. Thanks to our guests, our viewers, you for tuning in and watching. And Please remember to comment on Facebook and Twitter. If you missed any part of the show, catch the Recablecast tonight at 5, 10 p.m. throughout the weekend. I'm Rina Valentin, and from all of us, may the universe provide peace, prosperity, and love. Mwah. Adios! We're going to get you to sing next week, right? Yeah.